What's going on YouTube? West Toppy's RC. So today we are back with part two of the Gowie NX7 Nitro build. So in part one, we got quite a bit done on the mainframe assembly. This is a very in-depth, intense build, old school style building, like I like to call it, where you had to do everything. New models sure have spoiled us. So in this part, we're going to get started on torque tube assembly and tail casing. So let's so get we're started. Gonna start building the torque tube. So the first thing we need to find is our torque tube bearings. And before we add the ends, so it's just an aluminum tube. So you have to add your ends and screws and all that stuff. So before we do that, we're just going to take our bearings and we are just going to slide them on. We're going to come back and glue them into place later. But for right now, just slide them into place. They can move around. We'll figure out where they have to go on a measured mat. So now you're gonna take your two ends. Now these ends are identical, so it doesn't matter which one goes where, but you're gonna take these ends and you're gonna notice a hole in the torque tube. So you're gonna put your torque tube end in till the holes line up. You're gonna grab your M2 by 12 millimeter. Now, when you're doing these, you wanna stagger the screw head. So one head's gonna go this way with a M2 lock nut on the back side. So make sure it's a lock nut, no Loctite or anything like that and then just get this guy started. And then on the opposite side, so we know our head's on the right. So we're gonna flip our torque tube over. We now know the head is on the left side. We're gonna take our next head and we're gonna stagger it. So that way the weight's not all on one side of the tube because then you will get an out of balance torque tube. So now we're gonna take our screw here and we're gonna slide in from this side. And now we double check. I can see that the heads are staggered. Go ahead, get your lock nut get it screwed into place and tighten both sides so down. Now that we are done tightening our screws down, make sure that the screws are long enough that they are going through the, the nylon locking part of the nut so they can do their job. Now, the manual's calling for from this point right here, which is the edge of the tube, not the end, 280 millimeters. So we measured 280 millimeters and we did the same on this side, 280 millimeters from the end of the actual tube. So I'm going to slide this guy down. Now, what we wanna do is take a little bit of medium CA and we're going to carefully put a thin dab. And then we are going to slide our bearing on, but not, and be careful not to get it in the actual bearing itself. And then I like to just spin the bearing while the CA tacks up and then do the exact same on this side. So we're gonna put a nice thin bead. We don't want too much here. We're just gluing the inner part of the bearing race to the actual tube. And then go ahead and spin this guy while the CA tacks up. And then keep doing that. So once our CA is dried and tacked up, spin your bearings and make sure that they are free. No glue got in them, nothing like that. So now if you look at the outer part of the bearing, this little plastic casing, there is O-rings, two on each one. So that is, we're gonna have to lube those up. Now grab your tail boom and you're gonna notice on the front side of the boom, there is no holes, no slots, no nothing. On the rear part of the boom, there's just one hole. That's the rear of the boom with the hole. And the Gowie goes to the back of the helicopter to your tail casing and tail setup. So what we're gonna do is I like to use this silicone three-in-one oil. And I like to be a paper towel, put a paper towel down. I like to take this three in one silicone oil and I like to just douse this O-ring bearing everything in some three in one oil. I like to get it on the inside of the bearing here. And then what I like to do is take the actual tail boom itself. And I like to put three in one oil down on the inside of the boom like so and spin it. Now this does make a mess. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to simply take your torque tube and carefully push it through. Get that first one to start, just like so. Push it, push it, get that second one to start. Push it, and the silicone oil makes it very easy and very nice to do this. And we're gonna get it into about here until we have an equal stick out of both sides. Now this can still move back and forth in the boom and then take your tail boom, turn it up, make sure any excess oil drips out. And then I just like to spin it again, make sure that it's still free and smooth. And now we are going to grab our tail casing. Depending on the age of your kit, yours might come pre-assembled, it might not. This one did come pre-assembled. I already double checked, everything is Loctited and good to go. 
So what I like to do is I like to take a little bit of grease. I found this transmission modular grease works really good. And I like to just get it down inside of here into where your actual bearing is and where the actual torque tube end is going to be. And then I like to put just a little bit on the actual end. And then we're going to look for that hole. And we have that thread right there. So that's going to slide in. And we want to push the torque tube until it engages with the actual gears. And we can see that it's spinning now. So now what we're going to do is take our M3 by 6 millimeter screw with Loctite. And we are going to run this guy into here and let it lock itself into that hole of the boom. Now we know, give it a good twist, good pull, we're in place. So now grab your front gear and bearing assembly, and we're just going to slide that guy into place like so. But before we get that into place, let's go ahead and do the exact same thing. Let's add a little bit of some grease. We just want to make sure that it is nice and lubricated and greased up help with the protection and wearing slide that guy together push it now we're good to go here spin it make sure everything is free and smooth okay so now we are going to start on the pitch slider assembly so the first thing we're going to grab is our little bracket here it looks like this it is going to sit down into here like so m3 by five millimeter screw and we are going to slide that guy into there get it started snug it up so now we're going to grab our arm here and we're going to grab our arm and our actual slider assembly and this is going to go together just like this so that should fit into there so you are going to make sure that is correct and that is it's going to be a m2 by five millimeter screw there is two of them there's going to be one here and one here so once we got both screws in grab your ball Lock tight, run it in from the bottom, tighten it all the way up. So now we're going to put our pitch slider on. But before we do that, we need to install here and add a little bit of grease on our tail shaft here. We just want to grease it up so that way everything slides nice and free and smooth. So grab your slider and we're going to slide that guy down and then we're going to take your pitch slider bell crank and you're going to take your bearing i end up taking them back out because it's going to be easier to do it this way so take your bearing take this little shim add your dab of loctite not to get any in the bearing and then what you want to do is you want to grab this assembly and carefully slide it through the top just like that wiggle it into place here and then do the exact same on the bottom to get carefully get it into place tighten it down check and make sure it's free and smooth and then now do the exact same on the bottom one just like that to have a lock tight make sure not to get it in the bearing itself go ahead run that screw down tighten it up free and smooth. Now the next step is going to be putting the tail hub assembly and grips on. Now I already went ahead, this came pre-assembled, but I pulled it apart to double check, make sure everything was greased. They use lock nuts instead of bolts, so no Loctite is needed. Everything is tight, slot free, and smooth. So what we want to do, we want X7 facing out. We want our hole to, our threads to line up with the hole in the tail shaft here. We have a divot and that's what we want. So what we're gonna do is we are going to slide this guy together like this until that divot lines up with that hole. Our two millimeter driver with our set screw. We're gonna make sure we stayed center and we are gonna hold it in place carefully, run it down till it's snugged up. Now you can feel, hold the gears and you can kind of rock back and forth and feel that it's in that groove. So once we're 100% happy, lock that guy down, we know that we're in that little groove. So now what we need to do is rotate our arms here 
and we're gonna grab these little brass sleeves. These little sleeves are gonna go like this. And then we're gonna grab our M2 by 10 millimeter screw here, put a dab of Loctite on it. And then we're gonna run that screw through this arm, just like this, and get that screw started. Go ahead, run it all the way down, tighten it up. It's gonna tighten up against that brass, so it should be free and smooth. Do the exact same now, on the other before side. Before we move on, let's double check everything is free and smooth. As I build, especially with tail sections and head, as I make steps and go forward, I always double check and make sure anything is free and smooth, no binding, no grit. And the reason I do that is so if you do have a grit section, you know where it came from and where to try moving on to the tail fin. So you'll notice the tail fin has a slot here, no slot here, two different size screws, M3 by 25 here, M3 by 10 on the top. So we're gonna grab our M3 by 10 with Loctite and we're gonna run that screw down and tighten it up. And then on the bottom hole, we're gonna be running the M3 by 25 with no Loctite because it is a lock nut. So you're gonna slide this guy through here, install your lock nut on the backside, tighten right it all after the After we down. finish the tail assembly, we're gonna move on to mounting the main gear assembly. So now on this kit, it already came assembled. If yours doesn't come assembled, Follow the steps in the manual about putting each and every screw. I checked everything's Loctite and bearing has full grease in it. So we're good to just slow, throw this whole assembly in. Now, before we do that, you're gonna get three bags of shims and they're gonna be like these. You're gonna have a 0 0.02 shim, a 0 0.03 shim and a 1.2 shim. So now we're gonna have to have three shims on top, three shims on bottom of the actual main gear assembly before we slide our main shaft down into the helicopter. We have our shims laid out here. So we have 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 1.2, .2, just like this in this order. And that's how we are going to put them on. We're gonna put a 1.2 on, a 0 0.3 on, and a 0 0.2 on. Now, what I like to do is I like to get a little bit of grease on my finger, just a tiny, tiny bit. I don't even want that much. And I like to put a little grease on these shims. And the reason why I do this is because it helps the shims stick to each other. So while you're trying to finesse this into place, it can be a little bit tricky. It can be a little complicated. It can be aggravating. So now we're going to assemble them again. 1.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.2 shim. And then we're going to take a little bit more of that same grease and we're gonna rub it on the side of the shim that is going to go down onto the helicopter. Now this doesn't completely stop them from falling out, but it does help hold them in place. So now what we're gonna to wanna to do is finesse the helicopter. So we're gonna to wanna to take our main gear assembly and this can be very, very tricky and can be kind of a pain. So we're gonna kinda of have to try to slide this whole assembly down into here while having the main shaft. Now on the main shaft, you're gonna want the hole, the side with the single hole. The main shaft has two holes at the top, one hole at the bottom. We want the side with one hole. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide our main shaft in through the top, kind of rest that guy into place here. Do this where you guys can see it, knock into you a couple times. So we're gonna slide that into here. So now we can go ahead and we can take our shims that were here and let's just go ahead and get those guys slid in. So we're gonna start with the point 1.2. We're gonna to go to the point three. Now this isn't critical on the order. It really doesn't matter how you stack them, but this is what the manual is calling for. And then we're gonna take our main gear assembly. Now we can kind of put it on its side with the grease, but we still wanna be super careful that we don't just knock them right off because that is always a problem that can happen. So we're gonna kind of have to and we just drop those out. So we're gonna finesse them into place. Okay, so I got it in there and I ended up having to pull some shims out. So on the top, I'm running three shims, point, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and a 1.2. On the bottom, I ended up just going with a 0 0.2 shim. Now I think it's right, but we're gonna go ahead and slide our bolt in. And before we tighten it down, we just wanna lock that bolt into place. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna check for shaft play. So you want just a little bit, the manual says a millimeter, millimeter to two, a millimeter point two of shaft play up and down. 
So that feels pretty good right there. We have just a tiny bit of up and down shaft play. Now, when we go to get the torque tube in, now before we go ahead and fully tighten everything up, we're gonna dry fit the boom in a torque tube assembly. So we're gonna slide it into place, slide it till this front goes into that bearing. And then we want to spin this gear and we wanna check and make sure that we don't have too little or too much slack on that torque tube gear. So we wanna spin it by hand. We wanna check our mesh. We have our up and down. We could probably get away with adding one more shim underneath the gear. It's a little bit too much up and down play for my liking. So I'm gonna add one more 0.2 shim at the bottom. So now I added one more 0.2 shim on the bottom. I already went ahead, went for broke. I tightened everything down. So now we're gonna try test fitting our boom again. Shaft play seems perfect. There's just the slightest of bit. We're gonna slide it all together. Again, you wanna make sure that that little pin right there slides into that front bearing block. Just like that, perfect. So now we wanna rotate everything over. Feels great. Slack in the gear feels good at the motor engine for everybody and then gear play at the actual torque tube tail gear is perfect everything spins freely so i'm happy with that again i tighten everything down so now let's move on to finalizing the tail boom so now we're going to go ahead and take our mount and this is going to be for your top fin and we want the screw side to go on the left side of the helicopter. So we're just gonna carefully and slide this and be careful so you don't scratch your boom up. So we're just gonna kind of slide that guy out of the way just like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and final slide the tail boom into place. So we're just gonna carefully slide it in, making sure that our front pin goes into that bearing. Everything is smooth and free. So now I'm gonna wait on tightening our screws that in the first part I said make a mental note because these are gonna be loose. So I'm not gonna go ahead and lock tight and tighten these down yet until I get the boom supports and everything in the place so we can make sure that our tail casing is perfectly straight. So now let's set this whole assembly aside and start on the tail. Now we need our end and we're just gonna do one end and then we're gonna slide these little sleeves that we have. So. Just go ahead, thread this in, just like you would do on any other helicopter. Go ahead and run it all the way down. Only now one. We got one end on. We're gonna grab these little tubes here. There's four of them. Just go ahead, slide them all into the push rod. Don't worry about where they go or how they're positioned right now. Slide them all onto here. Well, these are for the guides. Grab your other end and go ahead thread that on and run it down. Now our tail push rod should have both ends and all four of these little tubes. Now we want our push rod guides. Now there's going to be four of these. And basically what we're gonna do is we're just going to spread them apart, push them over the boom, just like that. And you're gonna do four of them and you're gonna evenly space them. Now, these little guides that we installed sit into here there's two spots upper and lower i'm not exactly sure which one they go into depending on the most even straight run for your push rod so now this metal tail clamp is going to go towards the back of the helicopter you're going to put one push rod guide behind it and then the other three will be in front of it so the tail of the helicopter is here nose is over here so go ahead and get all of your push rod guides on just like this, you can kind of slide them around, get them where you want them. And then you're gonna take your M3 by 12, two and a half millimeter driver, and we're just gonna roughly get these started. We're not gonna tighten nothing down yet because we still need these to move. So we'll actually take that back out. Don't put that in yet. So now what we're gonna do, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our push rod and we are going to carefully Spread these apart enough to kind of just slide them through just like that. So you're going to want to grab the one that's going to go here. So this is going to be number two. Kind of just put that guy into there. Number one, if you're going from the back or from the front, however you want to do it, it's going to go into here. And you're just going to work your way all the way down. 
till you get all the push rod clamps into place. And then at the front of the helicopter, or should I say the front of the helicopter, this little arm is going to be 90 degrees. Now we want to go to the inside ball link that is inside the frame here, and it's going to be on top. So now, just like on SAB helicopters, there is a little Gowie imprinted into the link. That's going to be the top. So Gowie is going to go up. You're going to go ahead. You are going to install that onto this ball link here. Lock it into place. So once you get your ball link snapped into place, you're going to adjust your push rod length to that. When that arm is 90 degrees, your tail is 90 degrees. Now, you guys already know I set two to four degrees of right rudder at 90. So right now, I have about two degrees of right rudder while the bell crank arm is 90 degrees. You can see where we're at here. And then you guys can see where we are at here. So now that that is done, our push rod is the right length. We have all that set up. Again, we're gonna check it again before we finalize on radio setup. We are gonna go through now and we are gonna get these little guides and we are gonna get those put in to these guides. I'm gonna start with the first hole here. I think that should be good. Now we're gonna evenly space these out throughout the boom. And then you're going to just go through, space them. I will get a measurement in a second. And then you're gonna tighten all of these down. Before we go ahead and evenly space our push rod guides out down the boom, we need to make up our boom support. And the reason why I wanna do that, so that way we know where this clamp goes and our tail fin goes here so that way we can space evenly accordingly from here to here here to here all the way down so everything looks like it should and then we'll go ahead and tighten up these last four boom clamp screws so what we need to do is grab the carbon fiber rods and your ends you're going to have these aluminum ends and they are going to be held in with these little m2 by 14s and then there's going to be a lock nut now they tell you to epoxy these together. So I'm going to epoxy it. What I'm gonna do first is mark where these are gonna I'm fit. Gonna take a little Sharpie here and I'm gonna move this out of the way just a little bit and I'm going to put a mark. That way when I push this on, we're right at that mark. And then I'm going to do it to all four of them. And then I'm going to sand the carbon tube with some 120 grit okay, paper. So I went ahead and sanded the carbon fiber end. I did it to all four ends and basically just roughed it up. And that way when we epoxy our end cap on, number one, that's why I put the mark a little bit in so that way everything is clean and you don't see sand marks and it gives it something to adhere to. So now I got my M2 by 14 ready. I got my lock nut and I got my 30 minute epoxy. Now I use Bob Smith epoxy, but you can use whatever epoxy you like. Now I would highly recommend epoxy over CA for something like this. Get my paper towel ready just because you need some working time. And I personally like 30 minute epoxy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of rub the epoxy along this end. Now make sure you have paper towels, you have rubbing alcohol ready because you're gonna make a little bit of a mess and you need to be able to quickly clean that mess up that you make. So now we're gonna take our end and we are going to kind of rotate as we slide it on. Kind of go back and forth. I like to try to get all that epoxy down in there. And then we're gonna find the hole which is right there. And we're gonna take our screw and we are going to insert our screw all the way through without moving it. Find where that hole just went. There it is, just like that. Grab your screw, slide that guy in through here. There we go. Once we get our screw in and we're locked into place, now we can take our paper towel and we can wipe the excess off. And the reason we want rubbing alcohol ready is because epoxy can make a mess. Like we just made a mess of this push rod. So now we're gonna take our rubbing alcohol. We are going to get us a nice wet rubbing alcohol and it cuts the epoxy. So you can just rub it all down this will give you a clean glue joint. You don't see the excess runoff of epoxy that looks terrible. We all know what it looks like. 
That's personally one thing I really don't like is when you see epoxy all over a joint. And this is the same way that you do push rods for the rudder on SAB models and such, same way. Now take your lock nut and you're gonna go ahead, one and a half millimeter driver, and we are going to tighten this up. Now I'm only gonna show you one end and then all the rest will be the exact same. So you're gonna go ahead, tighten this guy all the way up, let that epoxy dry once you tighten this up and then go through and do your other two ends. And then you get a nice and perfect glue joint, clean, no runoff epoxy and one boom support. Okay, and so now that we got our ends epoxied into place, glue is drying, everything is nice and done and clean. We're gonna go ahead and install the boom support. So now we're gonna be going off of this hole right here. So you're gonna use this spacer, that's the M4 spacer. And that guy is going to slide into the frame here just like this, and we are going to line it up just like that. So now we are going to set the frame down. We're gonna grab our ends. Now I wanna put the lock nut to the inside and the hex head out. So that way, that's just the way I wanna do it. And we're gonna grab these spacers. So we need a M4 by 25 screw. We're gonna slide that guy through there. We're gonna slide our spacer on. We are going to take our lock nut and we are going, or our lock tight, I'm sorry. And we are going to put some Loctite on this bolt. And then we are going to thread it in and get it started. It is a three millimeter driver. So let's just go ahead and get this guy loose on this side. And then we need an M4 by eight. And we need a washer. So that guy is going to slide through here like this. Already got Loctite on there. We're gonna slide our washer on. We're gonna slide our boom clamp back. Go ahead and get this guy just snugged up. Now go ahead and do your other side support the same so now way. that we got our both side supports on. I went ahead tight in front and rear. Now we need a M3 by 10, which is this guy right here. And if you look, there is a hole right there. So you're just gonna slide that into there and go ahead and tighten this clamp up. Now make sure when you're doing this that the boom is straight. So eyeball it, look down the helicopter, make sure the tail fin is straight. Tighten this all the way up until it clamps down and make sure you hold that clamp straight so it all looks good. And then lock it into place. So now that boom is locked into place. Now we're gonna go ahead and mount the tail fin. Now grab your tail fin and grab a M2 driver or two millimeter driver and a m three by six screw with a beauty ring go ahead get that screw started it's going to be one and two so now tighten up your second screw go ahead and run that all the way down so both of them are now tight so now that is all tight. So now go ahead and tighten the actual boom itself. Went ahead and tightened all four of the boom clamps. So now the boom itself is on straight. Everything is locked tighted and tightened down. So now the next step is to go ahead and space the push rod guides and tighten those up. And we'll finish part two off. Evenly get that spaced out. As close to even as you can get it. Just what looks good. It's super hard to get an accurate independent measurement. Tighten up all your screws. Those little sliders should be inside. So the push rod itself rides in there. We'll oil those later with some silicone oil. Finish up part two here. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching this Gowie build series. I know it's an older helicopter, not as popular. I know a lot of people aren't going to be building these right this second, but it's still an awesome helicopter. And we of course need good build videos. There's not great videos on this thing and we need some great videos. So I want to thank each and every one of you guys so much for watching this build series. I want to give a huge thank you to Jason for letting me build his prize possession. The Gowie is something he has always wanted, and here it is. So in part three, we will get the head assembly swashplate servos mounted and get this thing looking like an actual helicopter. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Give this video a like, subscribe, take care, and have a great day.